Visual Learning Neuroanatomy Series Cranial Nerve 4, Trochlear Nerve Function and Palsy First of all, let's have a quick look at the seven extrinsic eye muscles in the orbital cavity. The seven extrinsic motor eye moving muscles are 1. Vagar palpebrae superioris, the four recti straight muscles superior, inferior, medial, lateral recti muscles, and the two oblique muscles superior and inferior oblique. Now, let's see the function of superior oblique muscle. In the previous video, we represented the fourth cranial nerve, the trochlear nerve, with this trophy, which has four blue bars. Now, let's see what can this trophy teach us about the trochlear nerve. The four stars at the top, and the O-shaped, golden disc metal or whatever, tell us that the trochlear nerve, the fourth CN, innervates the superior oblique muscle. The superior oblique muscle, emerges immediately, above the margin of the optic foramen, optic canal, superior and medial, to the origin of the superior rectus. Then it moves up, anteriorly and medially, toward the nose, and ends in a rounded tendon, the trochlei, a fibrocartilaginous ring or pulley, attached to the trochlear fossa, of the frontal bone. Then the superior oblique muscle loops around the trochlei, moves downwards, backwards and laterally, and inserts to the back and to the side portion of the eyeball. The fourth cranial nerve enters the orbital cavity through the superior orbital fissure, moves superior to the superior rectus muscle, and then innervates the superior oblique muscle. When the superior oblique muscle contracts, the muscle moves backwards, while the portion beyond the trochlei moves up and medially, pulling the back of the eyeball up and medially, and also gives it an internal rotation so it rotates the eyeball, along its long axis, toward the nose. Since it moves the back of the eyeball, up and medially, then its function is to move the eyeball, down and laterally. If this dog represents the right eyeball, and the man, behind and medial to it, represents the superior oblique muscle, then the head of the dog, represents the front of the eye, and the dog's ass, represents the back of the eyeball. Now imagine you grab the back of the dog, with your hands, and to raise the dog's ass up in the air, then the dog head will point downwards. If then you pull the raised ass towards you, the head will point to the opposite direction. And if you rotate towards you the dog's ass, then the head will also rotate internally, just like a tube. A very short summary. The trophy, superior to John Terry's head, represents the superior oblique muscle. Imagine that Terry's head is an eyeball, and the trophy is pushing it down, so it's depressing it. The two hands to the sides of the trophy tell us that superior oblique muscle not only depresses the two eyeballs, but also moves them to the sides or laterally. Now this is an animation which shows the three functions of superior oblique muscle. This is the internal rotation action of superior oblique. But the most important action of the superior oblique muscle is internal rotation. Imagine this golden circle at the top of the trophy can rotate. And that blue bar below it is shaped like an eye letter. So the top action of the trochlear nerve is to contract the SO muscle which then rotates internally toward the nose, the eyeball. But why is it so important? The extra epidermal muscles rotate the eyeball around vertical, horizontal and anteroposterior axis. Extra epidermal muscles other than the medial rectus and lateral rectus have more than one action due to the angle they make with the optical axis of the eye while inserting into the eyeball. The eyes do face forwards, but the orbit does not face directly forwards. The center line of the orbit is a little over 20 degrees out from the midline. The superior oblique muscle when it contracts moves the eye upwards, but also at the same time, makes a slight internal rotation of the eye, mnemonic. All those who are above, are eternal. So the SR just like SO muscle, makes an inversion of the eye. The inferior oblique, when contracts not only moves the eyeball down, but also while doing so, makes an extrusion of the eyeball, just like inferior oblique. This happens due to their angle with the eye axis. Clearly this is undesirable, as our vision would rotate when we looked up and down. For this reason, these two rectus muscles work in conjunction with the two obliques. Hence, when inferior rectus contracts, so we look down, superior oblique also contracts, to prevent extrusion of the eye. And when superior rectus contracts, so we look up, inferior oblique contracts, to prevent inversion. Thus the undesired rotator reactions of the inferior and superior rectali about the long axis of the eye are cancelled out. This keeps our vision horizontally level, irrespective of eye position in the orbit. But what happens when there is damage to the fourth cranial nerve? When we tilt our head, the vertical objects stay vertical, because our eyes also rotate automatically with the head. Imagine that the trophy represents, also the eye vertical axis, so if Boo Boo head is tilted to one side, the eye, and its axis, always rotates to the other side. This is the head in a neutral position. The red arrows represent, eye vertical axis. This image shows the head tilted to the left. You see that the eyes always rotate to the other side, to the right. So the right eye, rotates externally, and the left eye, rotates internally. This other image shows the head tilted, to the right. In this case, the eyes, as always will rotate to the other side, to the left. So the right eye rotates internally, and the left eye rotates externally. In case of trochlear nerve palsy, the affected eye is fixed in external rotation. 
The eye can't rotate internally, and cannot oppose the external rotation of inferior oblique. In this case, the patient would have vertical diplopia, double vision, because the vertical axis of the eye are not aligned. The patient tilts the head to the other side, so that the vertical axis of the unaffected eye, can move in the opposite direction, as always, so that it can be aligned with the fixed affected eye. By doing so the patient double vision gets better. The action of SO muscle is strongest when the eye is adducted. Because the back of the eye moves laterally, this stretches the SO muscle, so there is more distance. More distance means that there is more movement, and more power generated by the SO muscle. When the eye abducts, the back of eye, comes closer to the medial wall of the orbit, so the SO muscle fiber shortens, is not stretched. There is less distance, less movement, and less power. So the affected eye, should be assessed in abduction, if we suspect for trochlear nerve palsy. Normally since the SO muscle moves the eye down and outwards, then there should be hypertropia, because of the failure to depress. But this is rarely seen, and it's not so obvious, because eye position is balanced by the action of the other stronger muscles. When you move an object to the patient's left, both eyes normally move, the right eye, medially, and the left eye laterally. The right, affected eye, will make an upward shooting movement, when it moves medially. This movement, most often is very subtle and difficult to spot. Sometimes a patient might complain of diplopia, when looking down to read a book. Because the affected eye cannot depress properly, and during the reading, it might move medially, which worsens the diplopia. Most of the time there is a little and subtle tilt of the head, that cannot be easily distinguished, and since the patient usually has been having the problem for a very long time, and has happened gradually, he might not be aware of this tilt. So in such cases what do we do, to diagnose it? We look at some old picture, photo, of the patient, to see if he has been tilting his head for a very long time. Fun facts about cranial nerve 4. It is the only nerve that comes from the back of CNS, just like my kid the trophy at the back of the bookshelf. This image shows the fourth cranial nerve, crossing at the back of the midbrain, after it leaves its nucleus. Then the two nerve fibers loop around the midbrain, and then shows up anteriorly and makes its way to the superior oblique muscle. Imagine this V-shaped bookshelf is the midbrain with the two cerebral peduncles, and this image should remind you that the third and fourth cranial nerves exit from the midbrain. This is how the third and fourth cranial nerves look like in a real brain. This trophy inside John Terry's cranium tells us the trochlear nerve has the greatest intracranial length. This is important, because it makes it more susceptible to damage, from any pathology inside the head. Consider also the fact trochlear nerve is also, the thinnest, and most delicate nerve. What about its fibers? It doesn't have any sensory fiber, it just has motor fibers, and it doesn't innervate any viscera. So cranial nerve 4, has just general somatic efferent fibers, innervating just one muscle, the superior oblique muscle, of the eye. This was all about the fourth cranial nerve, next I will talk about abducens and oculomotor nerve function and palsy. If you liked this video. Please share it with your friends. Follow me on social media. Link is in the description. Feel free to add a comment below if you have any question or suggestion. And finally, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.